welcome to the micro communication course today we will learn that the three port junction the three port junction it's just like simply there are the three port here and in that particular three port so we will see here the e plane t junction or a h plane t junction so now this word is about a t here so this one is about that is, is just like a simple letter that is about a t and it has three ports so that's why we supposed to consider here about a a three port here because that junction is about a shape of a t here so that's why it's called as a, a three port junction so now what are those a t junctions there so as i say here earlier there are the two types of a junction we will see here that is about e plane t and a h plane t now so why this is called as the h plane t t means about a junction okay that is about a port e junctions are nothing but that is about a port or that particular junction and that particular port is present in that particular plane or in a given plane there so we will see here that is about a h plane t so as you know that a rectangular waveguide so in a rectangular waveguide supposed to be this is about a rectangular waveguide we supposed to say that this one is about your a rectangular waveguide and for this rectangular waveguide if supposed to be we have a t or a junction that is or a arm which is present in a plane or it is in a h plane so then it is called as a h plane t or if that particular junction it is present in a e plane so then it is called as a e plane junction so now that junction it is to be formed with the short circuit or a open circuit arm or a junction there so generally that a h plane t here that side arm or that arm is present in a h plane there so now how that arm is present in a h plane so that we should know earlier before understand that a plane and all so we should know that what is the e field component and h field component for this rectangular waveguide so for a given rectangular waveguide here so we supposed to see here for any rectangular component okay now if supposed to be see the rectangular section of this waveguide now so for this rectangular section here we have the magnetic field component this is about the nature of a magnetic field component this is we can call it about a h here okay now that arm is present or that particular junction is present in the given particular plane so now you see here this one is about a arm for this particular a h here this one is about a h field for this your rectangular waveguide but this one is about a arm that arm is a parallel to the that is about a field component or this arm is present this one is about a arm is present in a h plane t so this particular arm is called as a h arm or a that arm is called as a that particular waveguide structure is called as a h plane t okay this one about h plane t so this is called as a h arm because this arm is present in a h plane there and this arm is called as a side arm for this rectangular waveguide here this one is about a main rectangular waveguide and one side arm is there that side arm is present in a h plane so that's why it's called as a h arm and this 
side arm is again called as about a ancient arm. This can be called as a ancient arm there. So means its plane T can be a shunt T, or we can say that H T here. Some books you might have seen that a H T here. Okay, instead of H plane T, they say that H T, or we can say that a shunt T here. Okay, that is about a junction. Now this particular, this one is nothing but a junction here. This one is about a shunt junction. So that's why it is called as again a current junction. This one is again a called as a, a current junction. So we say again a shunt. Again, that particular junction is again called as a, a current junction. Or we can say that is about a parallel junction. Shunt junction or a a parallel junction and this is a one main arm of your guide this one is about a port 2 here and this one is about a, a port 3 for this h plane t now for the given h plane t this one is about a port 3 here and that port 3 is supposed to be considered as a h arm that port is about a H arm or you can say that is about a side arm. Now what are the properties of this H plane T? So H plane T, if this port 3 is perfectly matched, so what happened? This particular port is a match and again that side, this particular length, this A length and this length, okay, means port 1 and a port 2. If supposed to be that junction it is to be matched with a port 1 and a port 2 and that junction that port 1 and port port 1 and port 2 are electrically symmetrical with respect to port 3 here when this particular arm length are the same here this length arm is the same here so then it is about a electrically symmetrical and if supposed to be we consider that this we can say that a field here for this a H plane T, even we supposed to be consider that a given particular arm, this about your given particular port, we say that a port 1 or we can say that a port 2 here. And then we supposed to say that this is about a, a port 3 and this one is about a symbol of a H plane T and this is called as a H arm. This one is about a, a symbol for the H plane. If you draw a equivalent circuit here, so in the equivalent circuit, we suppose to consider that this one is a port 1 here, we can say that a port 2 here and this for this, we suppose to consider that a port 3. So this one is about a equivalent circuit for the given T here, H plane T. This one is about a equivalent circuit. Now this H plane T can be act as a power divider. So now how this H plane T will be act as a power divider? So if supposed to be, if we are providing the input to the port 3, If we are providing the input to port 3 as A support, then what happen? Then if we are providing the input at the port 3, this is about a port 3, so output will be available at a port A and a port 2. So output available at a port A and a sorry, port 1 and a port 2, that will be equal. Okay output available that will be equal and that phase will be a same here amplitude means whatever the input we are saying that will be divided in a port 1 and a port 2 the amplitude will be a same and that will be at port 1 and a port 2 again whichever the waves come out from this port 1 and a port 2 they have the same phase there Okay, they have the same phase. The condition is that this length and this length is to be a common. 
So mostly we supposed to be consider that given junction its length from this junction to port one and from junction to port two that length will be the same. So in that case, that output at this particular port will be a one and two that will be of a equal amplitude. So we say that port three the input, then we will get that a output at a port one and a port two that will be of a okay, a by root two. Okay, that will be output at a port one and two that will be a by root two that will be equal, but that phase is again the same thing. If you consider in terms of a power instead of a amplitude, I suppose to say that if we are providing the input at a port three, that is about a p here. Okay, that input is at a port three, that will be of a p power. So then, what happen here? That output at a port one and a port two, that will be divided by two. It will be divided by two. That is a p by two. So that's why we can say that this E H plane T, it is called as a 3 dB splitter. Okay, this one is called as a 3 dB splitter. One by two means what? A log of one by two. That is 10 log of one by two. That will be a three here. So that's why we are getting that a a 3 dB. So that's why a H plane T, it is to be called as a that a, a splitter. That is, or we can say that is about a power divider. That is about a 3 dB power divider. <coughs> 3 dB power splitter there. Now in the case of in another condition there, here we supposed to be consider that the input is given to the port 3 now. Okay, input is given to the port 3. Then output at a port 2 and a port 3. That will be what? If supposed to be input is a P, then output will be a P by 2. That is about a 3 by 2, 3 dB. Now, if supposed to be, we consider that if input is given at a port 1 and a port 2, if that input is given at a port 1 and a port 2, that will be supposed to be a P here. Then the what happened? The power output. Okay. What happened to the power output? Then the power output of either, okay, if suppose I suppose to be considered that uh, we have to given the input to the P1 or a P2, okay, that a port 1 or a port 2. So in that case, a output occur at port 1 or a port 2, whatever the port 1 we have. So in that case, that will be the output will be a P by 4, okay. And then a power output at a port 3 that will be a p by 2. So either any one of the port, if we provide the input to the port 1 or a port 2, if supposed to be we are providing the input at a port 1, output will be at a port 2 will be a p by 2. And output at a port 3 will be a, a p by 2. Then this h plane t is again act as a combiner. Now here we are saying that is about a divider now. Okay, so even H plane T will be act as a combined. So in that case, if we are just like we are providing the input to the port 3, so power will be divided here in a port 1 and a port 2. But if we provide the equal in input signal at a port 1 and a port 2, that is nothing but a collinear arm, okay, or you can say that a collinear port. So equal input at a P1 and a P2, okay, and okay, in both the case, in both the port, if we are providing the same input, then output signal at this port 3 will be the sum of the power at port 1 and a port 3. The condition is that that phase of that particular signal, that input signal is to be the same there, okay. If that input signal at the P1 and P2 has the same phase, then and then output will be adding here. Okay, so then and then we can say that we can say that this will be a act as a power combiner. So output will be combined here. Okay, the condition is that if we are providing the input 
at a port 1 and a port 2 with the same amplitude and same phase then and then okay even not same amplitude but same phase then and then we will get the output okay then the output at a port 3 will be combined it will be combined so that's why the edge plane t will be act as a combine if we are providing the input to the p1 and p2 so then it will be a combine but if air condition is that and phase okay equal phase if it is a equal phase that input p1 and p2 with equal phase is there then power at a port 3 will be combined if that input at a p1 and p2 if the phase is not same okay that phase is not equal if it is a out of phase if it is a next case what if it is a out of phase next case out of phase so what happened so power uh, uh, if it is a equal input same input but it is out of phase then power output at the port 3 will be a zero it will not combine it will be a zero so we need to find out with this condition what will be the s matrix for this h plane t okay so to obtain the h plane t matrix we should know that these conditions and then we will derive the s matrix for the h plane t so to derive the s matrix for the h plane t so we supposed to be consider here so for that purpose we should know that the fundamental concept so that we are able to derive the s matrix so yes matrix for this s plane t since it has the three ports so that's why we can write that s matrix is a square matrix it is the three ports that's why it is a three by three matrix so s11 s12 s13 okay sorry S21, S22, S23, S31, S32, S3. Okay. Now this one is about a S matrix for for this H plane T. Now what are those values of a S11, S12, S13 that is to be obtained by this particular condition? So what are those conditions? whether we are providing the input to the port 1 whether we are providing the input to the port 3 okay likewise these are the conditions that we need. so just we say that earlier that junction is a symmetrical here okay so in that case that junction is a symmetrical so even if that port 3 we supposed to be consider that so that output that s13 because we say that a h plane t here is about a okay this one is about your arm this one is about a h plane t. this one is about a port 1 this one is about a port 2 this one is about a port now this one is about a junction is a symmetrical here we supposed to say it is about a electrical symmetrical when we have the same length so in that case we supposed to say that s13 is equal to s23 okay s13 is equal to s23 that we have say earlier that is about a the junction is about a electrically symmetrical there. okay so that's why we can say that a s13 is equal to s Yes, yes. Okay, from this point of view, from the port three, three years. So then, that is about a equation one. Then a equation, another equation. If we say that this port three is perfectly matched to the junction. Okay, if port three is perfectly matched 
okay if it is a perfectly matched to the junction so then in that case yes 3 3 is equal to 0 okay this s 3 3 is equal to 0 here. because this port 3 is a perfectly matched to the junction there then then from a symmetric property okay, this is about equation 2 here so from the symmetrical property we say that S12 is equal to S21, S13 is equal to S31, okay. Then S23 is equal to S32, okay. S12, because we say that symmetrical property means what? Even if we consider that 1, 3, or okay, 3, 1, likewise. So that is about a port 3, 2, or 2, 3 interchange okay so that is about a symmetrical property there so input and output is the same so it is a symmetrical output so s1t is equal to s21 s13 is equal to s31 s23 is equal to s32 so we earlier say that s13 is equal to s23 so s23 is equal to s32 so we say that it is equal to s13 so this one is about your equation three here So then, if you put that equation, this 2, is on about whatever we get that equation 2 and the equation 3 here. So then, if you put that equation 2 and 3 here, okay, 2 and 3, then S matrix becomes S11, S12, S13. Then, S12, S22, S13, then S13, S13, and S0. Now, this one is about a matrix. So, now if you compare here this given particular matrix, so what are the values here? So, these values, first row will be a C. Only what change? S21 becomes a S12. Okay, what happened here? S21 becomes a S12, that is about a symmetrical property. Then S23 becomes a S13. Okay, so yes. Okay, this one. Then S31 becomes a S13. All these elements will change. So this one is about a S13. So then, S13 and S33 because it is junction is a perfect image. Now we have rewrite, okay, this using this property, we have written this S matrix, okay, using all these properties we have mentioned. Then another case we supposed to be considered here, we obtain this S matrix now for the given particular H plane T. So now we apply a unitary property. Okay. So what is the unitary property? From a unitary property, what we say that unitary property that is about S matrix, complex conjugate of this S matrix here is equal to what we say it is about a identity matrix. Okay, it is about a identity matrix. Now, this one is about a unitary property. Yes, matrix, it is about a identical matrix, this 1, 1. Okay, so we can say that all these columns, sorry, all these diagonal elements will be a 1. So, we say that this one is about a S matrix. Complex conjugate of the S matrix will be here. Okay, so what will be the complex conjugate of the S matrix? I'll re rewrite it. So I supposed to be consider that S11, S12, S13, S12, S22, S13, 
एस वन थ्री एस वन थ्री दैट इज जीरो एंड द कॉम्प्लेक्स कॉन्जुगेट ऑफ दिस विल हैव एस वन वन स्टार स्टार हियर कॉम्प्लेक्स कॉन्जुगेट ऑफ दिस टर्म एस वन टू एस टू टू एस वन And it zero is equal to one zero zero one zero 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 one. Okay. Now, next thing is about give the unitary property. What is the unitary pro property? <coughs> Then, unitary property say that the sum of the product of each term of any one row. Each term of any one row or a column multiplied by its complex conjugate, okay, multiplied by its complex conjugate is a unity. That is one. So now we will consider that, okay, sum of the what we can say that sum of the products of each term of any one row multiplied by its complex conjugate, okay, of a column. So this one. With this one, we say that in multiplying row one and a column one, okay, so that is about a unitary property. So this one is about a row here. This one is about a column here. So we say that <coughs> yes, one one bracket square plus. Yes, one two, bracket square plus yes one three, bracket square is equal to one. This one is about or another equation. We suppose to say that the equation here, <coughs> because earlier we replaced this one, so I write here four now. This one I write here is equal to about five. This one is equal to basic now. This equation basic equation. Now. we consider that <coughs> this row 1 okay multiplied with a, a column next one multiplying we so i'll write here row 2 and a column multiplying a row 2 and a column 2 so we'll get that <coughs> yes, one two square. Yes, two square. Yes, one three square is equal to what? I am saying that this one is about a seven. Okay, so now this one is about our equation seven. Then another one, <coughs> multiplying row three and a. column 3 okay so in that case we will get that this one is about a row 3 and this one is about a column okay you can say the s13 square plus s13 square is equal to 1 this one is a, i am saying that is about 8 now it is equal to 8 next is about a zero property So what is the zero property? If we multiply a row three and a column one, okay. What is the zero property? We say that earlier, any row, okay, multiplying the row with a complex conjugate of a another column, okay, not same number. Suppose row one is there, then another column, not column one. Okay, it can be a column to column three. So here, row three into column one. So that is about a zero problem. So in this case, so we'll get that the S one three complex conjugate of S one one plus S one three 
S1 is equal to 0. That is about our equation 9. Okay. <clears throat> so now, we are supposed to be considered that these are the equations we are getting. Then all other equations we are getting 6, 7, 8, 9. Now consider that equation 6 now. Okay, this one is about our equation 6. <coughs> so if you equate that equation 6 and 7, this equation 6 and 7, so you will get that this term, if you equate 6 and 1 here, 6, 1, 2 cancel, 6, 1, 3 get cancelled. So S1, 1, sorry, S1, 2, S1, 2 cancel, S1, 3, S1, 3 cancel. We'll get that s11 is equal to s2 square. okay s11 square is equal to s22 square means what s11 is equal to s2 so that we are getting <clears throat> and from this equation yes eight equation so we'll get that that is twice of s13 square here we will get that so s13 is equal to 1 by root 2 okay so from this equation so i'll just rewrite all these equations here from the equation 6 and 7, this one is about a 6 and 7, we will get that S11 is equal to S22. And from this equation 8, we will get that S13 is equal to 1 by root 2. Okay. Now, so we consider that equating. Six and seven by equating six and seven means what? S one one square is equal to S one two square plus S one three square is equal to S one two square plus S two two square plus S one three square. Okay, these are about the equation six and equation seven. So from that we'll get that S one one is equal to S two. We'll write here. That is the same number of equations. Then, from equation 8, so that we will get the here S13 square is equal to 1. So, S13 is equal to 1 by root 2. <coughs> okay. S13 is equal to 1 by root 2. Then from equation 9, so this one is about 11 here. So from equation 9, <coughs> if we take a common of S13 here, so it will be what S11 complex conjugate, S12 complex conjugate is equal to 0. <coughs> okay, so now from this, the condition is that here we say that. A S13, we take out a common here for this given particular junction. Okay. So now, if we can supposed to be considered that, <coughs> so from this particular junction here, so this, if we supposed to be take out a common here, so then what happened? So only this equation will, it will be 0 here, and this one will be so S11 will be what? S11 plus S12. So, we are supposed to be considered that S11 is equal to minus S12. Okay, this is equal to 0. We will see that this will be removed now okay, because of this. comparing here. So, this will be come out here. So, only we have S11 is equal to minus S12. <coughs> then, we say that here S11 is equal to minus S12. Simply earlier we have seen that S1 is equal to minus S12 or S12 will be a yeah, minus. That we say that equation number 12. Either both the conditions the same. So from this equation 12, from this equation 11 here. Okay. And then if you put that in equation number 7 that we have derived earlier, this one, equation number 7. Is the equation for 7. So we obtain that S13, we obtain that S12 here from this 12 equation. 
if you put that in the equation 7 so we will get that using equation 12 and 11 equation 7 so we say that s11 square plus s11 square plus 1 by 2 is equal to 1 okay that is about our question if you solve here will get that choice of s1 1 is equal to <coughs> that is about it 1 by 2 so s11 will be equal to a 1 by 2 so that is about your equation 13 here so whichever the values we obtain here s11 we got that 1 by 2 then from equation Eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So if you put that S one two is equal to minus one by two, S two two will be one by two here. Okay, and put all these values which are we obtained earlier in this equation in this S matrix. <clears throat> so what we are getting? Okay. So we will get that. This S matrix <coughs> for this S plane T, S11 will be 1 by 2, okay. This S12 that is about a minus 1 by 2, this S13 will be 1 by root 2, earlier we obtained that, okay. Then it will be minus 1 by 2, then 1 by 2, okay. Then 1 by root 2 here, and then this one is about a 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2, and this one is about a 0 here. So, this one is about a S matrix for the S plane T. So, now if you consider here <coughs> from this S matrix here, we can say that port 1 and a port 2 are symmetrical here. Okay, that port 1 and port 2 that are about the asymmetrical here that we supposed to be conclude here okay so this is about a <coughs> yes matrix for the h plane t so similarly we have to obtain that a yes matrix for the e plane t okay so you can obtain that s yes matrix for the e plane t. so now we will see here a e plane t E plane T which is about series T or a series junction that we say here <coughs> that is about E, e plane T there or we supposed to be considered that a voltage junction ok earlier that current junction now this is a voltage junction so series T so now if you see that a e plane t that electric field that arm okay that arm is present in the e plane here. so that's why it is called as a e plane t it is just supposed to be draw here that is about e plane t now this one is about a rectangular wave guide for the rectangular wave guide this one is about the length of the guide Okay, now this one is about a e plane. <coughs> okay, now that is about a rectangular. Now, <coughs> 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 this one is now here. If you see that the rectangular wave guide here. This one is about your electric field component. Now, this electric field component. Now, this arm is present. 
okay that arm is present in a plane that plane is called as the e plane now likewise you can say that this one is about the arm okay so we supposed to be consider that this arm here now this arm is present this one is about the e arm this one is called as the e arm this arm is present in a e plane so that's why it is called as the e plane that's why it is called as the e plane now this one is the parallel to this this arm is parallel to this electric field component okay then generally we say <clears throat> so now this e plane t will be act as a, a combiner or it will be act as a divider now how it will be act as a combiner or a divider so that that is about the property of that particular e plane t is to be considered so now that here for this e plane t we say that this one is about a port 1 here this one is about port 2 this one is about a port 3 one two the main arm is about a one two here and this one is about a port three <clears throat> if that port three is a perfectly match or this junction is perfectly match and that port one and a port two are electrically <clears throat> anti symmetrical with a port three okay <clears throat> these are about the anti symmetrical here now condition here what we can say that <clears throat> because this port 3 is supposed to be considered here when we say that if port 3 is perfectly matched to the junction then a port 1 and a port 2 will be electrically anti symmetrical means what anti symmetrical means is supposed to be we are providing the input to this particular port 3 output will be equally divided at port 1 and a port 2 but the phase of this output at a port 1 and port 2 that will be out of phase it is not equal phase that we have seen in h plane t that output will be of a equal phase here output is a out of phase so from this we can calculate that s13 or s31 relation or from the port 3 and port 1 and port 2 relation that is about a anti symmetric <coughs> that we will we need to be calculated now this h plane t will be act as a a power divider or a power combiner or if you wanted to see that how your electric field lines are propagating through this e plane t i supposed to be consider that this one is about your arm here okay so that's about what we can say that <coughs> this one is about your internal sorry okay so that is about your e plate okay now this one about it internal one okay so we are supposed to be consider that for this this one is about a <coughs> port 1 this one is about a port 2 this one is about a port 3 so if we are providing a input here that output here equally divided but it is a out of phase this one is for the e plane it is about it uh, output is equally divided if you draw a symbol for the e plane t this one is the port 1 port 2 and this one is about a port 3 this is about a, a symbol for this if you want to draw a equivalent circuit for this e plane t here so this one is about a port 3 here so port 1 this one is about a port 3. That is about a equivalent circuit for this e plane. Now, 
we see some condition if we have a input input at a port 3 input at a port 3 then what will happen port 3 input that is nothing but it's supposed to be power it has a power p is there then the output at the port 1 and a port 2 okay that will be a p by 2 port 1 and a port 2 output will be a p by 2 there is about a 3 db there it is called as a 3 db splitter okay but if we consider that input as amplitude a here then output at a port 1 and a port 2 that will be a by root 2 if the input to the port 1 or 2 incident at the input port 1 and 2 here then output will be appear at the port 1 or a 2 here <coughs> so what we can say that output appear at p1 or p2 that will be a p by 4 and output appear at a port 3 that will be a p by 2 now if you provide the input to the port 3 we say that it is equally divided okay so that is about a splitting so if you want to use as a power combiner then we have to provide the input to the port 1 and a port 3 but out of it then it will be combined at a port 3 that's all about a e blend t so we'll 